Hello and welcome back to Retake the Week. One day late because I was out of the country, which made it slightly difficult to record, uh, seeing as I had absolutely no access to anything. But it's been a pretty good, like, last seven, eight days in the Counter-Strike space. We had the end of the America's RMR. We had a bunch of stuff uh, like qualifiers, which isn't as big of a deal, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. But it's nice to talk about because we had to see a lot of players that don't get too much focus actually compete. Now, joining me as he does every week is Quacker with his favorite little metasport t-shirt there i mean I'm, it's a new one but i'm sure it's becoming a favorite very real quick because that is a it's a nice release of merch they put out isn't it it is it is very very nice looking shirt it has very nice fabric i'm gonna shield them completely here it fits very nice it's very comfortable to wear it is my favorite t-shirt at this point yes um I'm not surprised <laughs> favorite t-shirt for my favorite team we will talk about them more later i think um, well, we will they, they'll definitely come up a lot yeah but i think the first topic is one that we were going to talk about like the sort of what had happened at the RMRs, so then we realized there's only one real big topic that got missed out last week and I hadn't resolved yet, and that was, of course, Liquid. Now, I've put the topic as Liquid in shambles, but that's just because, you know, we wanted to see more from them in terms of their level of play, because across the last sort of week or so, we've seen them take some pretty harsh losses, and this roster's one we expected to go far, we expected to be big things, like they assembled close to as good as a team they could. I mean, sure, people have had their exceptions to the uh, Skulls move, but aside from that, it's a pretty amazing combination of talent. So I'm not sure where I stand on this, but I'm going to let Quack, do you have any thoughts like at the front of your mind about this Liquid team? Like, What do you think is like their burning issue right now? Um, I wasn't able to catch too many of their games. They were um, at slightly awkward hours, especially the the later ones mm -hmm. but if i'm speaking statistically and like I, I i look at what i think about the team i think in this rmr in particular yikinder was obviously the weaker player um mm -hmm. the two north american players really stood out twists and naf um katie and and skulls under the circumstances i think did fine but yikinder is the one you expect to be much higher um and yeah i think i think the fact that they didn't qualify for the major is also slightly overblown, um, in and also that they uh, got knocked out of showdown. Like it, I think it slightly overstates their um, badness, so to speak. Like it, it, I think they do have a higher level than what we showed here. Uh, the Americas Armor had, a, in my opinion, a very flawed format. I think, in most people's opinion, a very flawed format. Oh, horrific, and yeah. I think okay, so. What everybody has been saying is that the RMR is meant to bring forward the five best teams in America, and I don't think Liquid has been brought forward, even though they are one of the five best teams in the Americas. So, I think with a different format, they would have still gone through, and Showdown, I mean, Cadian spoke about it, they had zero prep for it, they flew in less than 24 hours earlier, like, across the continent. It's always like Americans to blame jet lag, but genuinely, they didn't have the best circumstances to compete in that game against a very formidable opponent as well, and like uh, as has been shown later on. Um, so I think the recent run of form kind of paints a much worse picture than is actually the case. But I, they need to fix the Akindar. They need to fix the Akindar. Otherwise, I think the team is not going to work. Because right now, I mean, it does feel a little weird to have both the Akindar and Twists on here, if I'm being completely honest. I do feel like that's slightly strange. It feels like uh, both of them won't be able to play to their strengths as they have in the past, and probably I'm wrong about that. Probably they can, but they might need to shuffle things around us slightly, just on a hunch. Yeah, they, you, I think you are wrong on that. They definitely can have both players on this team and coexist, and that's not the issue, really, from what I saw. What I saw is a Yakinda who, well, he's going to win you or lose you the game. That's always been the historic, like, fact of it. And in this scenario, we saw a lot more of the lose than the win. We saw a lot of opening fights that just didn't lead to a whole lot. Uh, the numbers will look flattering, like in terms of his win like loss ratio, in terms of opening kills to opening deaths, but it's still bad, even with the flattery involved, it's still negative. So I think, yeah, you can have had a horrible showing. Everyone else, well, they couldn't really get much going because the openings of the rounds were not very well executed. And I think Cadian's limitations on the op, there were a lot of rounds I saw him literally 
cost his team the round. Like, he's missing shots that I think a better AWPer hits. And even himself, he'll know he can hit these shots. He's not actually a terrible AWPer. He just played like it in a couple of the key maps and the key moments. So I think there's there's a couple of things there in terms of just in the moment performance were the problem. Um, I still, I'm still one of the people who has a few questions about skulls. Like, yeah, he's sharp, but I, I always thought there's a, there's an aspect of his game missing that could be an issue in the long term in terms of how developed he is, how intelligent he is, how wary he is of how he's positioning himself. Like certain problems like that that could crop up. None of that really is in the forefront here though, because the key problems were Yakindar and then to a slightly lesser extent Cadian. So maybe if they get the fit better. And, you know, less horrible seeding for the event. Uh, they go through, you know. If they get to play Legacy or not Complexity in their decider, they'd have a better chance. But all in all, yeah, it's been a, it's a very rough event for Yekendar individually. A, it was a very interesting and all, all as well all, also uninteresting discussion to hear about the format discussions and how that impacted Liquid. Um, I do... It was a flawed format. There's no reason why they should keep using the Swiss system that they had the last time. They have a Swiss system where two losses eliminate you, but three wins qualify you, which on paper sounds great, I guess. But uh, it is just it was just horrible last year. It's still horrible this year. Um, why they keep using it, I don't know. Liquid as well being seeded last in the opening round because this lineup didn't exist during in the December 18th ranking update. Um, it's also bullshit it completely undermines the purpose of having a seeding at all there were also some people saying we shouldn't have a seeding at all az for example um <laughs> what i have i don't know yeah i look his his thing is basically it, it's it's unfair for the worst teams that they always have to play the best opponents in the first games but I'm, i have a hard time wrapping my head around what other like method you would use to decide the opening matchups Complete and total uh, chaos. Just randomize everything. Randomize the two best teams in the world potentially play each other. Like what? Which is also a problem, but I guess he thinks that's a fine problem, or maybe he thinks that they should like seed it and have like the top team play the middle team, like in like they did in the European armor, where the top, for, which also is different. In the Americas armor, they seeded top to bottom, all the way through. In the European armor, they seeded so that the number one seed played the number nine seed, two played number ten. Which was for this purpose, I suppose, that the worst seed, worst seeded teams would play not the best opposition, but good opposition. So you still got like a top half and bottom half distribution, yeah. but you got slightly more even matchups. Which I mean, honestly, who cares what sort of a matchup you do as long as you have one better team and one worse team, and and the system knows which one. But it was, I thought it was really strange that that the Americas used a different seeding system for the same sixteen team Swiss bracket, um, but. That's that's a different discussion entirely to Liquid. I think Liquid yeah, Liquid have a lot to work out, and I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if they have events lined up. Let me check that real quick. Because they, yeah, they have that Indian thing. Uh, this, uh, wow, the Sky, Sky Esports, Esports Masters yeah. 2024. Yeah, uh, which is in the early April, which is still going to be post major. Uh, yep. Only ends out of out of the four teams invited. Only ends are actually playing the major, so that's. Gonna be interesting. We'll see who who else qualifies, and then they have Pro League Dallas. So they do have they have a solid month month uh, to work this out. And I, honestly, yeah, I I would give them the benefit of the doubt for being a newer roster. They were only assembled. I don't think this roster was finalized until 2024. So I mean, we knew what it was gonna be, but like it wasn't pro properly announced. And I can't imagine they started practicing much longer before they were announced. So. Um, they have time to work things out, and they need to use that time. And uh, but I think that's going to fix pretty much everything. Yeah, there's not. I'm still not overly concerned. All in all, yeah. As long as we don't see some stupid headline that says Yakindar to IGL, I'm not panicked. When that happens, oh, screw it, just blow it all up. I've given up. But until that point, I think they're all right. They're still going to be. Uh, I mean, maybe my pre RMR sort of hopes for this roster ha were higher than what I'm expecting from them now. Like, I was thinking this team could be one of the top five teams in the world, you know, in my, like, consistent top five sort of dream. Like, of, like I think we said as much. I think we said as much when oh, we yes. were asked, who do we think will be top four in the major and who do we want to be top four in the major? Yeah, And exactly, I think exactly. I think I put I think I put Liquid as my four, so, yeah. So um, now my level of expectation for them is lower. I'm still expecting a really good Counter-Strike team, and I think 
yeah, the ceiling will always be there for them to have the one-off run. But to expect it consistently after we've seen, well, Mr. Inconsistent at his worst, I think is, yeah, it's a bit of a pipe dream to have them be one of the consistent elite big boys. But definitely a dangerous roster in the future. But that pretty much wraps up that, wraps up that topic. I think there's not too much more to deliberate upon. I think we've we've said what we need to say about those relevant players. Um, yeah, so we'll there's more fun to, things to talk about. Yeah, we'll move on to... The Blast Showdown, which went down over the course of the last week, it finished on Sunday, and uh, I believe you have a, a special message to deliver to a certain group of fans or players. I, what, I wasn't entirely following because the script wasn't in English. It's not in English. I, I would like to take a moment to speak to my people. All right. Um, so let me just... <clears throat> I've prepared a few words. Sverige, Metisport supporter, vänner. Uh, det grabbarna åstadkommit i veckan är något som är historiskt. Men det, slår, det som slår hårdast i mitt hjärta är den otroliga uppslutningen bakom grabbarna vi har haft som supportrar. I, i Counter-Strike så har Sverige alltid varit bäst i världen. Kanske inte alltid på servern, men alltid utanför den. Så sluta aldrig vara er själva och fortsätt stötta våra svenska lag och spelare. Våra turneringar och nyhetssidor, kommentatorer och streamers. Alltså jag blir, jag blir tårög när jag går in på Twitter ibland. Tusen, tusen tack. Sitt ner i båten. Do you have anything to add? Typ. Uh, psh, uh, you know, uh, jag pratar inte svenska and etc. <laughs> I, I have nothing really to say. Honestly, I don't even know what you said aside from the few words that are basically English. So, but essentially, everyone got the gist when he said Metasport three times. Metasport mm. showed up, played really good Counter Strike. They have a, a sort of singular style. I've been slightly obsessing about trying to figure out roles, responsibilities why we're doing certain things but overall i think it's been quite an impressive showing for them the last week to show off mostly potential like hey they didn't get through the blast showdown in the end they made it to the final game but got beaten by spirit still took a map and also in the dallas qualifier we saw today actually they did lose again but they took a map and they played good counter strike so it's been a good advertisement for the project like their ambitions which i have been <laughs> i am privy to they they are pretty like reasonable when you see the way they've played here and the level you've seen out of guys who've not been in the headlines yeah this team has a lot of potential so in that sense blast showdown was very exciting for the swedish scene you've definitely got a group of players not just a player not just a guy here and there a group of players who can make things happen in the coming uh i'd say coming months it's not even going to be that long these guys are some of them are still in school the moment that's out of the way and they're full-time guys bro we've got a team on our hands i think that's about as exciting as you can be without being fully like actually making it through two events. Yeah, I think um, to sort of recap what, what really happened this week. Um, so we started off with a game against Falcons. It was pretty much always um, tipped to be a loss. Uh, like the general vibe <laughs> in, in, the, in the Swedish camp in general was this game is probably going to be a loss. But if they can put up like a good amount of rounds, put up a good fight, they're going to show what they can do. It's already a huge achievement that they're even here. And then they go and beat Falcons, and that's already like people are saying this is one of the greatest sporting achievements of the year in Sweden. Uh, it is that win. I would say that win against Falcons is the biggest achievement a Swedish team has had since NIP won IEM Fall in 2021. Like since then, there has been nothing going for Swedish teams. Maybe some players, but no teams. And this win against Falcons was like level to where they were before, where we are afterwards. That's huge. Then they go and beat Monty. Uh, honestly, for this game, after the Falcons game, maybe I was slightly hyped. I was thinking no matter who wins out of Monty and Imperial, Metisport are winning. But they do. They steamroll them. They won 13 rounds in a row on Mirage to close that. Yeah, that was and, crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then on Sunday against Spirit, they, they've already played a map, bef- uh, actually co- uh, several maps before, I think, um, in the day. They go out and they beat Spirit on the first map fairly comfortably, and they were looking really confident on Vertigo as well. And then they go out, it's Mirage, it's Spirit's backyard, they get stomped, we go on to Nuke, and it's sort of a repeat, it's very one-sided for Spirit. And then they start to sort of build a comeback, and I can tell you, like, at, at 8.12, I was like, holy shit, is this gonna happen? <laughs> like, are, we gonna, are, are we gonna run it back to overtime? Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, they get shut down, which is expected, but, like, that's a solid ass game. Let me remind you, FaZe could not take a map against Spirit in the Kalavitsa final. And I'm not trying to say the Metasport is better than FaZe. I'm saying that this achievement is really close for a team coming out of nowhere to do this against the reigning Kalavitsa champion. So um, 
for those who don't know about Medisport, two other, uh, three other players are born in 2005, which means two of them, one of them dropped out, but two of them are still in high school. They signed new contracts with Medisport just a couple of weeks ago, in the process denying the several offers they already had. This was confirmed by Medisport when they announced the resigning. They had concrete offers. It do, it's not a stretch of the imagine. Like it, it's an open secret that NIP definitely asked about the Nilo. He said, <laughs> no, I want to stay with Medisport for another year. Uh, several of the other players also had offers. They're insane. But uh, they resigned. Once they graduate high school this summer, they are going to go full time. Because at this point, th- like right now, they only play after 5 p.m. That's the only time they practice. They play officials before that sometimes, and then they have to take time off school. But like they only practice after 5 p.m. because the rest is school time, which is fucking insane to make it here, to be honest, and make it this yeah. far. So just off the back of the round, what I was saying before is that something that has really impressed me is not even related to the team at all. It is the absolute, sh- like the sheer level of support we've had because there are so many different fans just so high on this right now. And they were so psyched. Like going on Twitter at that point, if you spoke Swedish, this was nuts. And honestly, I don't think there is a better national fan base in the world than Sweden. I, I'm absolutely serious because I, I don't speak every language in the world. I can't be sure of that. But I do speak English. I did not see shit like this when ITB made the major quarters. Like, the level of support for this, for this team that they have here is so impressive that it gives me chills sometimes. Just, like, going, going into a Twitch chat. And it, it's, been, it's been crazy. So that's sort of what I was saying is that, like, this, it, it's so beautiful to see. It's amazing. It's what, what keeps you going. It's, uh, like, like it's, it's what keeps you in this sport sometimes, sometimes when you feel like, holy shit, this level of support is so crazy. But anyway, that's my Swedish rant. Yeah. Uh, they're still in the Dallas qualifier because that's a double elimination bracket. They're starting to oh, play great. against Prezi okay. right now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, <laughs> with that over... Uh... <laughs> It's it's honestly it's it's brilliant to see this level of passion about the Swedish team, especially after such a long dark time. But let's talk about some of the other rosters that were in this event. Uh, yeah, we said already Liquid got knocked out by Saw, uh, but they actually end up going through Saw. They they end up winning against Cloud Nine, uh, and then they end up beating OG, who also had a surprising run to make it here, knocking out Heroic. Um, there's a couple teams, yeah, who showed us that their level might have been a slightly misjudged. I think especially OG. A lot of us had us. Completely written off as just oh they've made another mid as fuck mid t- mixed team, why bother caring about this roster? Now this isn't concrete evidence of quality play. I mean, sure it's nice to see, you know, two sides of the game from Regali in some of these series, and we're seeing an amazing level from Heavy God, but it really wasn't, you know, overly convincing when you think about it. Because they then go on and lose two out of Saw, no one really stepped up. If you look at their game tactically, it's a bit. It's not really anything special. They're playing very standard, defaulty meta type play. It's ah, there's not there's not much to be excited about when you look deeper into the roster. But at least at the top end, the frag is a fragging. Um, and yeah, the other big team who were at this event who made it through Spirit. Whoop de doo! Who surprised Spirit beat Elevate? Shocker! Uh, they beat Big comfortably as well. Then yeah, they they got their their cage rattled, I think, a little bit on Vertigo, which they thought they were, in their heads, they were like, oh, we're starting to get the hang of this. You know, they played it mm. against Big and crushed them. To then get, you know, taken down a peg, it must have been annoying. So hopefully they, they're still working on the fix uh, where you don't have your best player randomly sitting out on an isolated solo anchor spot. That'd be my uh, suggestion. Um, <laughs> but no, have you got any uh, any other big topics? I know you had a lot of thoughts about the Metasport side of things, but do you have any other like teams that you kept an eye on, or has it just been Metasport bleeding green all week? Um, there's one interesting uh, statistic about Saw that I can just drop real quick, is that so far in 2024, they are undefeated in best of threes, which is fucking crazy. Um, and they've played very good teams in several of those games, so Saw look to be like actually legit. Um, which is cool, because this is like... One out of several Saw rosters that have actually looked decent while being fully Portuguese, which I think is cool. It's like, uh, we've had others before that looked all right, but they didn't make it this far. I remember they played overtime on the final map against VP to make to just about miss out Antwerp, I think, in the RMR. Yes. So, um, but of course, this is the biggest achievement. We have, we have for, for the first time ever, we have more than one Portuguese player in the major. Uh, they made the Blast Fall Finals, which is insane. But also, about OG, I wanted to talk about this. They, have, they had oh. great form. I remember, I remember everybody was on Twitter like saying, I know like this could just be a fluke, but OG are playing a great game right now. 
what is a shame for them is that they don't have the ESL ranking to actually get invites for the spring season. Or at least they didn't, because those are already handed out. And uh, fall like fall finals was the or, or spring finals was the, or their only chance at like making a big LAN, and now they missed it. Their next event scheduled right now, I'm sure they'll get other events and they might qualify for something and they'll play online stuff or like maybe the oh, challenger yeah. events. Their next event lined up right now is fall groups in like the end of July. So what is a real shame for them is that they showed a great level like right now, and then Heavy God obviously had to miss the final game because of a health issue. And sound had right. to play instead. Yes, you, uh, see, I was wondering that that came that came through my mind, but I couldn't remember what actually happened with that. Yeah, for some reasons, uh, Heavy God couldn't play because of some sort of health reason. They didn't specify what, which is his privacy concerns. Uh, sound from Nexus had to step in, who also had a great time during the RMR. He played a great game there. Uh, went out 0-3 and still had very positive stats. So I can understand what they did, why they did it. Uh, he put up good numbers in this game as well. Honestly, he was second best behind Regali. Uh, he was definitely not the reason they lost this game, but also Heavy God probably could have been the reason they won this game if he was playing. So right. it's yeah. that was probably a big loss. Um, but it's a shame about OG. It's a, it's a shame about OG because I feel like maybe maybe this could have been something that got the ball rolling if they had actually had some more events lined up, but now they don't. So mm. yeah, shame. No, yeah, it's, it's a shame. But also, I don't feel I never feel too sad for a team that has some sort of partner spot and oh, they couldn't make the most of it. Like, no. Crimey river. I'm, ha I'm happy Saw won because OG had their chance to make it through in the groups. So like they're all. I'm happy Saw made it through, but yeah. uh, it, it a bit of a shame for the team that they, regardless if they qualified or not, if they had more events lined up, they could have rolled off of this performance. Now they can't. So probably there's yeah. going to be the next time we're going to see something noteworthy out of OG is probably going to be in, in after the summer break, no matter what. So yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not surprising, but. One team that I think I'm not going to spend long on this. Just going to brief touch on it. I I was disappointed heroic didn't come through. I want to see more of heroic. I like the the roster they assembled. You know their sort of emergency backup after they got royally fucked. So it's a shame that they couldn't actually make it work here. I still think this roster's somewhere between half decent and solid. If you catch the vibe, like they're not going to be an elite roster, but I do want to see them at more events because I think they play good CS and they have good players. So unfortunate they couldn't make it through. But let's wrap up this blast topic and let's move on to well something a little a little smaller, a little more regional, and again with flying that yellow and blue flag. We're talking about the Jönköping <laughs> qualifiers, uh, which was the pure Swedish qualifier, I believe is the only one that's actually happened. <laughs> yep. But there was some happenings, some things went down, and it was pretty surprising who came out on top of it, even if if you're not a follower of Swedish Counter Strike. Because I've got a feeling this team often plays best locally right am i going crazy or do alliance typically no, show up yeah. in swedish no. stuff more than anything else last season there was an argument to say alliance were the best team in sweden and that argument was that they won the local tournaments which the others didn't but of course everywhere else they showed a horrible level and they couldn't do shit yeah uh which was very interesting but yeah uh briefly on this event it is dream summer in Jönköping. uh and there's gonna be a challenger event as is customary at a lot of the dream events at this point, the, the equivalent of an old DreamHack Open. And um, fortunately for us, uh, at this point, there is a regional spot. A lot, of, a lot of these things have had regional spots before, where like when you went to Australia, you had like an extra oceanic invite or something. Uh, and now we have a, we had a full Swedish qualifier for this Jan Shopping, in addition to the Europeans qualifiers and all. Uh, so that was honestly the big win, that we had a Swedish qualifier for the Swedish event, which is Amazing to see. Winner of this was, of course, Alliance. All four, or all, all the four notable um, Swedish teams showed up. All of the rest of them, less notable, did. Uh, all of the all of the top four are the ones that you guys care about. Uh, all of them, except for Godsent, made it into the top four. Godsent lost to in overtime against a mixed roster featuring Jazar. Oh, that's. Uh, cool. Yep. They have um, they have some troubles right now. It has to do with like out of server things, so I'm not too scuffed about that right now. I'm waiting to see them work it out and if they can do it. Uh, it's a rough period right now. Uh, the big game was honestly Eyeballers versus Alliance because Eyeballers beat Medisport the same day Medisport were due to play Monty. They played this map, it lost in overtime against Eyeballers uh, because of course Eyeballers always play overtimes, and it set up this amazing game against Eyeballers and Alliance, which. I didn't even realize this until this game happened. Eyeballers and Alliance have a huge fucking rivalry, like as teams. It's like 
this this one felt like Barca Real Madrid. It felt it really did feel feel like that. Uh, sitting watching this game, and like there were slurs in the chat. Like they were like, "Sit the fuck down!" And then after the game, like the Alliance players came in and like BM'd in the chat and like in the Twitch chat and everything. <laughs> Great game. Alliance are gonna be there. Uh, if you don't follow Sweden closely, you know you still know some of these players. It's Robin, it's Twist, it's Plesson, Budenmaster, and Ovid. So. Uh, also recently got a coach, uh, so keep an eye uh, keep an eye on this team. I think is is the word. Uh, they've showed an underwhelming performance. I think they've showed a level lower than their players for all of their time as a team. But uh, they've actually now now they're actually starting to um, with with this. I think is a good step to start showing up a bit more. Well, that's the issue I've had historically with this alliance roster. Is I, my conversations with you, I'm told in Swedish bumfuck land no one's ever heard of, Alliance played sick, you know, and in Swedish qualifier here, Alliance played sick. And I watched them play in like, European events that I actually watch, because um, I'm not that into Terrible Crown of Strike that I watch such specific things. And I think they look incredibly average in an incredibly low-level event. You know, They never mm. look threatening. They've not got a star player who pops off. There's nothing that's really fascinating about the way they're playing the game and i'll occasionally be like oh yeah you know twist is is okay and then someone will be like he'd, he'd be a great support player one day like okay this is so uninteresting to me like alliance have never really moved the needle so the fact that they are always so successful in sweden kind of annoys me because i don't want to see them in events i don't want to see them i don't care <laughs> i know they're not going to be good <laughs> i want to watch the other teams who i've got actually like some hope for like even eyeballers i think often put up a better showing and obviously, number one team I want to see is Metasport because they are the talk of the town right now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit peeved, honestly, that they go through <laughs> over these other guys. But at the end of the day, it's great. We'll see them, well, we'll see them online. We'll see them in Yearn Shopping. Uh, that's going to be nice. And this is always a fun event. I've always thought, like, yeah, sure, Yearn Shopping is a nothing city. Like, I've been there a lot. Bugger all to do. It's not a great place to ha- hold a big land, but it's got such like history and pedigree so before it was hosting dreamhack opens it was hosting you know, dreamhack winter and summers which were even in the cs calendar a big deal like they're big deals in like the european land scene if you want to byoc but they were a big deal in the counter strike space so it's always a nice event to attend if you're a player if you're a caster if you're a viewer anything even if it isn't in the sexiest of places <laughs> they're moving beyond. winter to stockholm starting oh, this year i think that's that's it's smart it's smart because if you've been out there in the yeah. middle of winter and there's no sun even and that lake is half like frozen like you do not want to be there it's i heard this terrible. winter they had like a sleeping area that was in a separate building so you actually had to go outdoors in the winter cold to get there which uh, was not Bro. popular uh, but yeah we're going to we're going to stockholm which is also going to be good for hotel prices because well yeah hotels are already slightly more expensive in stockholm but at least the prices don't triple during the Dreamhack week, which is already True. happens during when you're in Yon Shipping, it's impossible. Like it is a robbery to live in to like have a hotel in Yon Shipping during the Dreamhack weekend. Uh, What's the thing? The ta- um, yeah. Dreamhack slash ESL is now well, they buy out the hotel that's right next to the actual event. Um, mm. So if you're a player, staff, whatever, you're fine. If you're not one of them, you better either be a volunteer sleeping in that big communal hall, or one of the kids, like or people bringing their own PC who sleep in the actual event. You can't just casually show up to that city. And go to DreamHack. <laughs> you you yeah. have to be in that building. That's also one of the reasons why teams don't show up for like the bioc and stuff. Is that like they don't want to have pay like the the orgs don't want to pay these ridiculous hotel prices, and it's, the players don't want to do like old school two thousands land setup sleeping at their PCs because they're professionals. So like yeah. booming to Stockholm might actually attract like good Swedish teams to play local events at these at, at these big venues where you get like an international crowd, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so there is some benefit to moving on from that uh, yes. that little town, which I found out was like the fourth or fifth most populous city in Sweden. It is uh, populous, but yeah. <laughs> yeah like, po- popular, I don't know about populous, no, yes. No, no, po- not popular. No, heavens, no. <laughs> even, if, even if their hockey team was good at one point, not too long ago. Really? HVO7, yeah, they were good. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, 71, yeah. Yeah, they, they were actually... 71. Yeah, 71? they were decent. Uh, yeah, seventy-one. I forgot they played. They they were from Yen Shopping. I don't know much about hockey. Frölunda. Okay, that's I just on. knew I snuck into one of their tra- their practices when I went to Dreamhack in winter. Um, <laughs> oh, it is seventy-one. Yeah, we snuck in and like into the arena, and then just stood there and just watched them tra- practice for like half an hour. And then someone came up to us like, "Oh, you got like it's like speaking us in Swedish." We're like, 
uh, English, sorry, and they're like, oh, are you scouting? And I was like, no, I'm just lost, I guess. <laughs> I didn't mean to be here, but I am here now. <laughs> Final Swedish point. While we're recording, the ranking was just updated. Medisport are top 30, and this is the fir ta first they're time... Top 30. They're top 30, number 30, exactly. This is the first time a Swedish team is in the top 30 since the last full Swedish... As in full Swedish team. Since the last full Swedish Fnatic roster slid out of the top 30 in mid-2021. And that, which also had Jakinjo, funnily. This also has Jakinjo. <laughs> um, Damn. Huge. Huge news. Huge news. A son of a bitch. He did it. God damn Let's it. move on. There's one yes. more small point that was mostly just fun to talk about. Yeah, there is. And uh, it's, those of you who have no life and look at Twitter all day will have noticed uh, Kassad has been unhappy about something again. He's often unhappy about something, but this time it was something... This really he... doesn't date the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really doesn't. Kassad had a, had, a, had a moment, and it was about, well, practice etiquette, as I've put on screen. And specifically, he was referring to Gen 1 streaming their pracs, and the response he got from KRL uh, slash Gen 1 social team, which seems to be run by KRL or some small child... Um, when he pointed out that this was highly unprofessional and shouldn't be done, and that teams should avoid pracking with them. Uh, yeah, the response was from the community and from other people who actually are involved with teams and coach or prac. We're like, yeah, this isn't right. This shouldn't be done. <laughs> KRL, of course, basically just flipped him off and acted like a real grown-up professional in all this. Yeah, I and mean, he did, he, did, he did call him a cocksucking cunt. That was what he did. Yeah, professionalism at its finest. I mean, yeah. I've never personally used those words in my office. Um, but hey, <laughs> you know, I actually have a boss to, to like uh, report to. I think KRL is entirely running this, so he doesn't care how it's perceived. Uh, so no, that's not really the point, though. The point I think here is, just in general, I, don't believe, I can't believe this has to be said. Prax shouldn't be recorded. I thought we went over this years ago. They shouldn't be streamed. Again, I thought we went over this years ago. Like the one example I think I've seen of people bringing up with like another team that actually does this is Mythic, and Mythic have publicly acknowledged that they are pracking, streaming pracs. That's why they don't get to prac against the best teams. And, and I think okay they're fine with that because they, they are, are a pure like streamer team. They are not trying yeah. to be real players. Gen One is trying to be essentially a, an academy for, for yeah. players. So it's a bit of a it feels a bit over dramatic to call it a moral ethical quandary, but like. It's a thing that like shouldn't come up again, really. At this point, we've been over this so many times in the past, and I think Assad has every right to complain, and teams have every right to essentially um, blacklist Gen One from their practice. I think it just makes sense. Yeah, and they basically have. They're gone from the practice group, and they um, their response was basically like, "Oh, we always anonymize who we're playing against," but like that doesn't matter. Like you're, it's not hard to figure out either way, and like other. Other teams are probably gonna like. It's not hard to figure out. It's. I don't even know if they were doing that. I don't know if KRL uh, was anonymizing the stream. I didn't watch it, but they, that's what they said that they do at least. I thought it was, I th the funniest part about this, I thought, I thought was the social media management of Gen One, which I can only imagine is like KRL's friend, like, and that's one hundred percent of Gen One staff. <laughs> yeah. So like KRL is like CEO, COO, manager, and everything, and then his younger brother is the social media manager because he. W it's definitely a def different guy unless KRL is clinically insane because the Gen One account was talking about KRL in third person. <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, that's not in, that's not the craziest thing to have happened in in esports. Let's be real. Y you are French, so you might know more about this, but KRL to me seems like a right fucking cunt. I don't. I have no. F I like. I have never liked him one okay. bit. I think. I I, this French. is a polarizing statement. This is not a view of King T, the French person. This is a view of Quack, and I have only seen him on Twitch and Twitter. I think he seems like an asshole. He seems like an idiot. He seems like someone who will make up shit on Twitter just to get clout. <clears throat> Falcons leaks, and uh, yeah, I feel I feel like I, I feel like he's just a bitch ass streamer, and then he made an org. So um, I have almost zero opinion. Of, of KRL because he's a guy who pops good. up all the time if you follow French stuff and I've seen mm. the occasional clip from his stream where he's like talking to a player or something in that vein yep. but in general I have never watched his stream I do not care for it I don't I, I don't consume much French media in general because I don't want to have to think whilst I'm doing stuff like I have to think when I listen to French especially like fast spoken slang filled French like that's just not as someone who's never lived in France I can't follow Mm. easily so i just don't bother so yeah i have no opinion on him 
uh, he seems popular with the French players, but to be fair, big streamers who are assholes who end up being friends with players isn't a rare thing. So maybe he is a giant knob. I don't know. But he yeah. acted like one in this exact scenario. I can tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> I know that much is true. Yeah, well, Kassad might be a cocksucking cunt, but at least he didn't leave the country when he had two concerts booked with a friend. What the f- Why are you, why are you blasting? Why am I on blast here? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome random, mikey you're welcome you're random welcome thing to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> let's wow. move on we had we okay. had a big transfer we had a big transfer we did, we did. I, I was, I, my, my, mikey told me that and i said this is gonna be the funniest retake the week joke of all time and i he had said, to figure out what the hell you were talking about <laughs> then i realized it was me <laughs> yeah <laughs> mikey's gonna have a big laugh about that later anyway uh oh, well, there was anyway. a bit yes there was a the there was a big shuffle. move we have the eternal yeah, we shuffle the... as we do every week because it is eternally being shuffled. Uh, <laughs> God damn it! Uh, we'll start with the yes, as you say, the big one. Again, bloody hell, so many Swedes in this episode. Can someone else do something this week so I can talk about another country next week? Yeah, NIP signed Exist as their coach. You know, he formerly was on Heroic for a long time, and now he's moved on to not greener pastures, but different pastures for sure. Um, and now he's on NIP, and oh, good fucking luck. Is all I'm going to say about it because they've got basically no roster and very little to look forward to. Yep. Uh, it's the first move in their in their attempted rebuild of the of the uh, NIP team. Uh, some people thought that this was a big like slam dunk move, and honestly, I wasn't sure because there's been so much talk about like the NIP leadership during his time on NIP and how bad they were and just how fucked over they got that I thought that there was a chance that. A, that bridge was genuinely burnt um, but then it turned out it was fine so uh, that's good uh, it was rumored a couple of days before it, before it actually happened and uh, I think I think it's a good move I think it's always very hard to judge coaches so like I cannot say if Exist is or was better than DJL as a coach but him and Kadian had much better results than DJL had with well uh, Hampus, Alexi B and Alex so it's uh, it could definitely be something, and it's always it's ni it's nice to see exist back in in NIP. Like it, it, as much as as much as NIP is now a very different team, it's nice to see exist back in NIP after winning their. You know, he he was part of the legendary roster. If you're some new person who doesn't know, uh, NIP won a major in 2014 with exist on the roster, and he was also part of the roster that won 87 games in a row without a loss. Yeah, he's a he's a legend for sure. Um, yeah, just a bit of an odd move, I think. Not in terms of NIP, because NIP, like, yeah, you just got yourself a good coach who's had mm. some, you know, history of success. But I think it's a bit weird for Exist. Like, uh, I don't think like you needed to go take that risk to go to start like essentially rebuild a project from the ground up. I thought there there could have been better opportunities if you'd waited a little bit. You know, teams that had. Uh, more going for them and weren't being vetoed by a bunch of players. Uh, you know, that'd been cool. But no, I think uh, for him, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting project, I think, to dig his teeth into. Uh, but for NIP, and for NIP, it's like a good signing. I can't really say much more until I start seeing who they bring in because I know they've had yep. trouble bringing in the talent they want to. And that's a big part of like what's going to define their future. So I'm a bit iffy on this move. I don't think it's ter terrible. I just, I just don't see that that being the most important part of the NIP uh, rebuild. It's it's very much going to be dependent on who they can actually sign. Yeah, I think in terms of like playing the field and seeing what you could get, I think that's sort of what he did after he left Heroic because it's still been almost. I think it's been three months since he left Heroic. Uh, yeah, he's and like I one, he's not waited a full major cycle. Like you wait for the major, he's waited half a major shit cycle. Goes to shit. And that's when you get teams. That's when teams are like, oh, yep. let's rebuild our we want to okay, drop this coach, didn't work, bring in a new coach. That's when stuff starts happening. I don't I thought he could have waited another month and a half, essentially, and got a I better think, result I, than this. I think he could have. At the moment I'm not sure where he would actually end up going because I feel like pretty much everyone has a coach locked down that they are happy with at the moment. So does uh, everyone until the major happens and you shit the bed. Yeah, but I I can't even fathom like who would realistically shit the bed hard enough to actually make the move. Like it's not like Falcons are not going to trade Zonic and they miss the major. Uh, G two are probably happy with Tass. I guess G two might be the only one if they decide Tass doesn't work. But then yeah. Anyway, point being, uh, um, 
there was talk about him going to Astralis, and apparently that was like on the cards. But then Astralis decided they wanted to be full Danish, and an English-speaking coach wasn't on the wasn't on the table anymore. So um, yeah, which is interesting. I guess I don't know if exists actually spoke English with the heroic roster. It probably did. If but that was I, a factor, then yeah, probably because uh, I don't. I'm not sure yeah. how different the Danish can be from one team to another. I do know uh, Peacemaker tweeted that he actually told Astralis, I am available if you want me to coach. And they said, no, we want the Danish-speaking coach. So uh, I'm just assuming that that was why Exist was rejected, because Raga is probably not much better. But yeah, uh, it's it's cool if they can actually build a decent team around this. And I think Exist being there could be a good starting point to like deciding who you want to get, because I don't think that's finalized, anywhere near finalized. Um, they have good academy players. You could pick up maybe one or two of those. There's players who are benched or available right now that you could probably get um, for a decent, for, for a realistic amount. There's on there's rosters on paper that could be built from this. And exist is a is a good it, exist on his own won't win them events. He won't give them results. But no matter what players you get, I think exist is still a good pickup as a coach. Um, it won't. He won't decide the level where you actually end up, but he's going to maximize the level of whatever players you actually get. I think, hopefully. Okay. But yes, yeah, it, it's hard to judge. Got, it's it's impossible to judge because I, I, I don't see the I don't see the signings. I just don't see them. Like well, when I say they... maximize, I, I mean like if they get completely shit players, they're still going to be top thirty. But like that's going to be their ceiling, and I think Exist has the has the ability to bring them to that ceiling. But then. Um, it obviously depends on who they get. But of course, again, it's impossible to judge coaches. How the fuck do we know? Like, I don't even know if DJL was a bad coach. From everything I heard, he was a pretty good coach. When you when you talk to the players who worked with him, they thought, he's a pretty good coach. But maybe that's just PR. Maybe that's just their opinion. Maybe, uh, yeah, it's it's so difficult. Maybe maybe he didn't work with Alex and he worked great with Hampus. Maybe, like, whatever. It's, uh, so it's weird. It's weird to judge. But it's a cool move. Cool move. PR move as well. PR move for sure. Um, but yeah, let's move on. There was one please, more move. Please. Or a, mo- uh, a serious move. Of moves. moves. Uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, it was... Yes, how do we put this? NRG decided that they could do better. And the way they've done that is... <laughs> go scrounging for Evil Genius's former pieces. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not sold on this at all. So, NRG, they've cut Fang. Uh, they've moved Daps back to coaching. And they've signed Walco and Automatic. Now, there's, there's, there was a time when I saw this NRG roster come together and thought, you know what? When Breezy is ine- inevitably not good enough, you can cut him and bring in Automatic. I thought that was that was the move. Like, you bring in the veteran who's stable and who's on every roster, no matter how terrible, been able to be actually solid. Like, you know, he knows how to play Counter-Strike. He knows how to win games. He'll bring some some useful... Uh, I think, experience into this roster. Instead, I think they've cut the wrong player because I think Fang looked better than Breezy in the games I watched. And they've signed Walco to call. I don't see how that changes much. I don't see how that improves anything. He's never really imp- imp- impressed me uh, on any of the rosters he's been on that are actually been worth taking a look at. And So I don't know. I don't think this roster's improved. I think they've just made, at best, a lateral move and it's it's grim. It's grim. This is at this point. This is the EG roster, except they have. Bre- uh, wait, who do they have? They have. Um, OC was Breezy, was Breezy on the last EG roster? No, it wasn't, right? Uh, um, I don't think so. They the except they have Breezy and OC instead of Junior and George, right? And then of course Walco, but like I, IGL being swapped. Who, who the fuck was calling at the end of EG anyway? Oh, it was Walco. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I completely forgot about that, but he was on EG for half a year. Wow. Uh, this is just the last EG roster, but they have Breezy and OC instead of George and Junior, which on paper maybe should be an upgrade. In practice, hard fucking downgrade, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and that's hard. That, that's so strange to say about evil fucking geniuses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure actually, because I know Junior in local play is acceptable because not having a brain can still work in American yep. Counter Strike. But 
honestly, in current form, OC is not playing good Counter Strike at all. So no, I can see it awful. being almost a downgrade. Yeah, honestly, I think George. Yeah, because is more potential. O than OC is awful in local play and on LAN. So like currently, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, right now that's what we're judging on. Uh, yeah, no, this was they, this was not it. This was not it. This is hardly worth talking about. They won't do shit. They didn't do shit. They won't do shit. Um, I'm I'm pretty confident in saying that they won't do shit. This team will do yeah. nothing and and disband. No, no, that's that's accurate. I think that's fair. I thought there was more coming from this team when it was the Daps IGL side. Again, mm. I, I mentioned that roster move. I thought they could make it before, uh, but seeing as they've gone this direction with it, yeah, uh, no, absolute L. Uh, briefly, you put this in the notes. I'm not too bothered. I don't think most people will be, but uh, Zipnix or Zipex or I always forget which one was supposed to be correct. I'll just say whatever comes to my head. Is now a free agent. Who wants it? Yep. I don't know, uh, but that's cool. That's what I was gonna ask you. That's why I put this in. Do you see Zipnix going anywhere? Because, let's be honest, 28, 28 is not too old to play Counter-Strike. It's not, but he's too shit. So, Sashi, maybe? Mm, okay. He reunites some old friends. I don't know. Aside from that, I don't, I don't think there's anywhere that I'd want him to go. Uh, so, if I don't want him there, I personally don't see why those teams would want him there. But I don't want him to go into Prezi. I don't want him to go into any of the other like Danish rosters. That I can think of, like, what is he going to go play for NIP? Like, no. Nah. Uh, you don't not... think you don't think he could do the debris thing of like going down, stepping down into a lower tier, and being bomb ass because he's so good on PC right now, like being so good. Mm, no, because Dupree is way more talented than Zipex ever was. Zipex's Fair. intuition for the game was what kept him relevant and honestly impactful for so long. Mm. And it's it's clearly just gone. Like, if you watched him at the end, it was just gone. So I don't see how he's going to magically come back to like what's he going to start playing 200 hours like no he's not he's 28 and he's been <laughs> he's washed. An adult, yeah. like he's not going to start doing that so i just think it's a it's a downgrade for most teams to try and take a risk on him yeah if he goes to sashi and proves me wrong or some other really low level team good for him i don't mind taking l's uh but i just don't see it so i'm not a fan yeah i don't think anyone actually needs him let's go on to our final of the uh the recurring topics, the one that always comes around, and that's prospects of the week. Now, I'm going to let you open up just so that we can get mm. our dose of blue and yellow out of the way. <laughs> Who have you picked, please? Blow my mind. Uh, I have picked Adam B, which I, I don't think I've mentioned Adam B as my prospect of the week yet. I have definitely I mentioned so. Nilo. I'm, I've mentioned Nilo and definitely Susp. And I think ZTR as well at some point. So, have you mentioned them? Uh, definitely Nilo and Susp. ZTR, I don't know. So third time's the charm, perhaps. Adam B is a great, great player. Has always been a great, great player. He showed that in Showdown. He was the he was the big player there. Um, especially in the final game, he was putting up a decent ass performance while uh, Nilo was pretty much nowhere all game. Um, I think you said this on Twitter, and people have been saying this in Sweden for a while as well. Uh, he doesn't really get the same credit that Nilo gets as like the big prodigy. Adam B is probably not. Nilo probably still edges him out, but like he is still up there. Like if you're if you're a tier one team looking to sign Nilo, you should definitely look at signing Adam B as well, because he is just a bang ass player. Like there's there's it's hard to say anything else about it. Like he is uh, put up a great showdown. He's put up a great performance ever since he joined this team. He put up a great performance on Young Ninjas as well before that. Um, right now, probably the better of the two twins. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, but that has a, a lot to do with positions as well, and yeah. Um, there's nuances to it, but yeah. Yeah, there's nuances, but yeah. Interestingly, both of them sort of starting to share this opening frag duty as well. I'm actually checking the numbers right now. On T-side, they're only 1% apart, and they're yeah, they, like... They take up the majority of the team's opening attempts. It's just, I think, okay, I'm gonna... We keep talking about Metasport, and I keep not saying this, but yeah, I have in the coming like couple weeks a video on Metasport, three young players coming out. It's a very interesting thing to look into the way these guys play, considering these stats sort of seem to line up. They don't do it the same way at all. You don't expect this. It's it's really interesting, because usually when you see teams like, you know, guys taking high amount of opening frags are typically doing something similar. Like, they're taking the similar fights, maybe alternating it, or they're both, like, on the the front line of certain fights, like, you think Vertigo A ramp, they're just, you know, depends who gets spotted first, stuff like that. No, no, no. These guys are very different. Um... Especially the CT side, I think, is the most fascinating part of it. So I've got some stuff to talk about there, but I just want to keep it on topic, because Adam B is the topic here. 
Yeah, the guy's talented. Hell yeah. He's very talented. He played good games. Uh, first map against Spirit, he was very big. I think even with the big like blowout maps on the second and third maps, he also played the best. He had like, at least one good clutch, and he had a couple of good multi-kill rounds that actually kept him alive. At mm. He had several big rounds at map point, which was kind of impressive. Um, yeah, and this is one of the two guys who aren't even... who They're in school all day, and then they come home to play Counter-Strike for 10 hours straight. Like, this is... Big. I think it's big. I think it's big. So uh, well done to well done to Adam B. Adam Adam Backpack, as they called him on Twitter, for carrying them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been a big fan ever since I started actually following this team. I, I was I went into it thinking, you know, there's Nilo, the guy I'm actually here to watch because he was originally part of one of the multi prospect episodes a little while ago. Uh, but then I started watching the other guys. And I was like, oh crap, okay. Adam B's got some chops, and like as the team's figured out their roles and all their positions and how they want to approach rounds, because you know they're playing a pretty unique way right now. A lot of teams are not playing like this. I started noticing Adam B like he's taking tough fights, winning them. He's really sharp, really crisp, and does a lot of like the difficult stuff whilst also putting up star numbers. So, yeah, big fan of his, and I think he's part of the reason this team actually has the potential to go further, and why they've already reached the. A quite impressive target of being top 30 in the world i think to really have achieved it probably they need to maintain it for a little bit but i'm sure they can considering the way they've played till now so yeah, really mm. impressed with them i didn't think their timeline was this short let's put it that way i saw them i thought it'd take them like so i remember i had this discussion with certain people in like late january early february i think it was late january i thought it'd take them until june something like that. i thought it'd take them like five months maybe to get to that point so i thought you know it's tough in the open qualities all this you know, online play gets really rough and they don't have guaranteed invites to anything. So I thought maybe it'll take them to like a DreamHack summer sort of time or something like that to maybe get an impressive run that bumps them up. You know, maybe they can break into the top 30, top 20. But no, for now, really impressed. And I can't wait to see what they do when they actually finish school. <laughs> so that'll be something else. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, that's Adam B. My prospect of the week is PR. He plays for uh, Mouse NXT, the most prolific academy in the tier anything space really no one else produces talent quite like they have the argument maybe is for navi academies but like other than that in terms of number of players who've come out of there mouse next he take the cake and pr looks set to be another one of those guys he's only 16 he plays really smart counter-strike whilst also being absolutely mechanically gifted like there's a lot of things to lo to like on this roster i think he's the most impressive so far so I've seen him, like, the spots he played when I actually started diving into some of his demos, not always the most impactful by themselves. It's just he does a really good job of optimizing himself. So I'm a big fan of PR. He's had some good games for Mouse NXT. I mean, sure, the level of competition isn't crazy. They are an academy after all, but they've played people you've never heard of. Let's be real. But what they've done is played really good Counter-Strike. They've won the games, and he himself has shone. So I'm a big fan. Thought I'd shout him out. Yeah, good player. I've obviously noticed him in the stat sheet. Um, Mouse NXT not really having... I mean, I guess this is the new generation of the players that we might be talking about later if, if like, Mouse can keep this track record up. Because, yeah, they're a young team. Yeah, yeah, they have not yet been able to build a team that can match up to the old NXT roster, which was, I'll be honest, some of the players on the old NXT roster who are now on Mouse were borderline tier one ready or when they, or when they already signed the team. I feel like it wasn't unrealistic for any of them to get picked up in, like, six months. Maybe not ready, but, like, people were probably looking at them. Uh, yeah. And then they played on NXT for a year or so, and then they got picked up. So they've gone for a much younger roster with this NXT roster, I think. A lot of like 16 years old, 16 year olds, and such. Um, and they're not really getting the results yet, but they're obviously building something, and it's pretty cool. Uh, PR is is one of the guys you want to look you want to look at here. Um, yeah, they've had also had to move some players about. Like Nixius got bought out. They've been moving around with different offers, uh, yeah. but. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's cool, and PR is definitely the guy. Um, definitely the guy. He's he's just the guy yeah. on this team right now, I think. So uh, definitely could be very interesting for where he comes later. It's a good prospect pick because um, he might he might genuinely be a tier one player at uh, at some point soon, soonish. But yeah, that's uh, that's the prospects of the week. Um, well, I think we're gonna wrap it up here because I didn't have anything prepped in terms of side content we could throw out there, like a. A diagnosis or a draft or anything but i think quite importantly this has been a weird week in terms of like the level of play 
And I'm stalling right now because I just realized in my boneheadedness that I have not plugged anything that we were supposed to plug <laughs> early in the fucking episode. Yeah, of, we even said I'm we even said earlier this week. Like... Earlier this week we said, Oh yeah, we should we should plug stuff at the start of the episode. <laughs> that would probably be a good idea. I just realized that ten minutes ago. So I'm about... <laughs> <laughs> I did put it in yeah. the show notes. That's the silly thing. I didn't put it in the show notes. So I'm gonna yeah. just put it in like a, a fucking recurring thing, like in all caps. Like plug yeah. your own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're putting oh, it in right it. now. The, uh, the Google Doc is open right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, but yeah, we uh, we should have plugged this, but yeah, if you are interested in our content, you want to contribute, help, uh, anything really, uh, become a member. It always helps out. You get access to the uh, Q&A. You get access to uh, real, like the other content I make early. And you also get access to stuff that just won't get released because I didn't like it, so I didn't release it. Uh, or I didn't need to use it in the way I thought I would, so I'll just release it there. So yeah, members get access to special stuff, as well as early access and the Q&A. And of course, if you are a fan of low-level Counter-Strike and you like supporting people who are uh, actually cool, uh, Quack, on his live stream is currently do streaming as much women CS as he can, it seems, and I'm sure there'll be other games as well. But a lot of it has been like Impact League type stuff and those teams playing in their open and intermediate playoffs, depending on which region they're in. Uh, so that's Pretty cool. So check that out as well. Follow him on there. Uh, uh, Wednesday, 19, 1930 CAT. Uh, CAT. Um, Guild versus Ensethina. That's the first impact game I'm casting. I'm trying to get back into the swinging thing. It's been a lot of open games and intermediate games, like their playoff games. They don't get a lot of coverage either way, so it's it's nice to be able to bring a stream. And it's a nice, no pressure environment to get back into it. But uh, yeah, yeah I'm st- streaming an impact game, you can find on HLTV. Um, and all of those things. So, Quacky CS, if you're not following on Twitch. Yeah. And you might occasionally get a co cast from this gorgeous guy called King something. I can't remember him. But yeah, you might occasionally drop in with a co cast if he's not got anything going on. And if Quacky yeah. wants him. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep you posted. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next week on Sunday. I'm pretty sure I've got nothing in the way. I'm pretty sure we we're, free- we're going back to the schedule. Next mm-hmm. Sunday, we're on. So yeah, see you in the next one. Goodbye.